are and we've been looking forward to this because we are looking to learn about getting uh, the knowledge about ZKs and building with that in our front-end application. And we brought the best person and we the 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 OG right now that would discuss and teach us how to use all this tech and build um, usable software and PM that people can actually use. So uh, without further ado, I believe that the earlier we start, the earlier we can cover more grounds. I don't want to waste time going to um, other things. Let's just get started quickly. Um, on that note, I'm going to welcome Raza on stage. He's going to do the introductions and kickstart and get everything going. All right, um, Raza, it's all yours, man. Thank you. Um, before we start, uh, I, uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to give a bit of context today. I also brought Ahmed with me uh, because I'm actually stuck at the airport and Ahmed's going to save my butt. I will uh, I will share a slide and I will talk a little about the port text and all this stuff. Fun fact, uh, Ahmed invented zero-knowledge proofs. I'm messing, but he's he's a legend. He's a legend. Uh, he was actually going to show you. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just for the record. I'm joking. He's a, he's a very sweet guy. You know, he's blushing already, but he's he's a he's a legend and he does everything I can do ten times better. Uh, but uh, I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. So for sure, what I owe you guys is I'm gonna be coming back. I'm gonna be coming uh, back for you for another one. Uh, but I'm gonna save my butt. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen. I'll talk for 10 minutes, and then I'm going to hand it over to Ahmed, who's going to show you guys the cool stuff you can do with Zero Knowledge Proofs. Um, let me just share my screen. Please let me know if you can see my screen, because I cannot see you guys right now. So if Koha, can you? Yeah, yeah. it's good. All right, cool. Awesome. Let me go slideshow. All right, so I'll be talking for 10 minutes, uh, a little bit, and then... Uh, uh, hand it over to Ahmed. So, intro time. Who is me? Who I'm? Who am I? I'm I'm just a Devra uh, Raz codes on the internet. Uh, coding nerd. I love to play with tech. Work at Scroll uh, together with my boy Ahmed. Um, and uh, what I want to talk to you guys about today is I'm going to talk about the Vortex Hackathon that I'm super stoked to bring to you guys. I really appreciate the Web3 Africa community for helping us, like you know, uh, spread the spread the word. Uh, and the one thing, key thing I want to talk about is prizes. But the Hackathon Vortex is the first one ever. We've actually got eight partners. Cypher is not mentioned here. We've also got Cypher. So we've got Anchor, Aztec, Chainlink, Conveyling, Grab, Open Zeppelin, Sindri. All have uh, bounties up. So partner bounties that we're launching, I believe, tomorrow, uh, the details. Dora Hacks is the link. Sign up, homies. So it's five days. We start on 24th of April. There are three tracks, but we also have a general track that's part of everything. What, what does that mean? Basically, we've got privacy, DID, DeFi, and gaming. But if you want to build something that doesn't fit in here, don't worry, you still qualify for the prizes. We'll just make sure we map it to the closest track. Uh, so the, the exciting thing I want to talk to you guys about today is that the way we designed the prizes is that there are actually 24 prizes. So we're giving nine times 3K per team, nine times 1K per team, and six times $500 per team. And then we also have a prize pool of 11K, meaning... You deploy and verify your contract or build a valid detector. And, we, and detectors are, are part of the ciphering, uh, uh, ciphering bounties. But you do either of this and just deploy on scroll, you'll already be eligible for the prize pool. Now, there are certain requirements. So I so say here in the criteria, uh, what the requirements are for the prize pool and the track. But I'm really stoked about this because we're, we want to encourage. And we want to encourage and reward builders. I know myself, Ahmed knows as well. You know, we hack all the time, and that's the story I'm going to tell you in a bit about us uh, hacking on a ZK voting app. But we want to reward you, and I'm really stoked about uh, the African builds. And Africa is a continent, and, you know, much respect to the obviously the different countries. I'm working with Nigerian kids right now that are so talented. I work, uh, you know, my boy Tony, uh, you know, obviously Kenyan. My boy Idris, you know, uh, shout out to Idris. Nigeria, you know, the, there's, so, there's so much talent here. So I'm, I'm really stoked and I really hope as many people sign up, join the Telegram group, tag me if you have questions. We're here for you guys. So um, without further ado, I'm going to quickly talk about Scroll and then I'm going to quick, quickly talk about uh, Applied ZK and then hand it over to Ahmed. Uh, by the way, I cannot see if there are any questions, but if they're not, like, uh, if there are any, feel free to interrupt me. 
So ZK uh, scrolls a ZK roller. You know, Vitalik mentioned, you know, uh, zero knowledge also referred to as the holy grail of skating solutions. Why? How is zero knowledge used? Well, first, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gloss through this because I know a lot of gigabrains in this community, uh, um, but uh, I've got more simplified talks if you really want to, uh, if you really want to dive into it. But a roll-up is basically an L2 on an L1. An L2 is a separate network, a separate blockchain, as it were, that batches transactions and posts them back on L1. So instead of the transactions being computed on Ethereum, they're computed on scroll, executed on scroll. But, you know, uh, an L1, so Ethereum in this case, needs to prove that these transactions are valid. How does Ethereum know that transactions are valid? Well, two types of proof exist today in the roll-up and layer two space, validity proofs and fraud proofs. Uh, I'm not going to touch upon fraud proofs. That's uh, the OP roll-up uh, landscape. Validity proofs is what a ZK roll-up uses. So a validity proof or a ZK proof is generated. And what it does is we have a separate network that proves that these transactions on scroll are executed properly, i.e. Uh, Ahmed sends me money. A ZK proof is generated for that. And then all these, for every execution on scroll, a proof is generated and an aggregated proof. So a proof combined is generated and it's posted on scroll, uh, on, on Ethereum. So then all the transactions are batched together, posted on Ethereum. The ZK proof is, is posted. So now if anyone wants to come in and check whether these transactions are valid, they check the receipt, which is the ZK proof that, you know, these transactions are valid. So that's how you inherit security. Now, a couple of things. Why scroll? The simple answer is you as a developer, the simple answer is you have cheaper transactions, higher throughput, you have the security of ZK proofs, i.e. a transaction, a receipt that these transactions are valid. And then something called, this is very important, close to instant finality. Now, I said I wasn't going to talk about OP rolls. I'm going to quickly talk about OP rolls. Generally speaking, when you use an OP rollup, also an L2, right? Off-chain network, you have the transactions. And then you let's say you have ETH on an OP rollup and you want to bridge that back to Ethereum. There's so-called an arbitrary period, seven days. Why? An OP rollup doesn't generate a validity proof, i.e. the receipt. So they the rollup trusts a trusted party, a third party, to check these transactions. And if is there there is a incorrect transaction, it basically submits a fraud proof that says, hey, this transaction is incorrect. Now what happens then? Let's not get into that. But an OP rollup needs to give ample time for a trusted party to do this. And that's called the arbitrary period. So if you have one ETH on an OP rollup, it takes you about seven days to bridge it back to Ethereum, also referred to as finality. Now, there are other solutions. There are third-party bridges. They take a bigger cut because they take the risk. I'm not going to go into that. A ZK rollup, it takes hours for you. And that's what's close into instant finality. Meaning you have one ETH on scroll. You want to bridge it back to Ethereum? You can because within a time period of, let's say, 12 to 14 minutes, we will post the ZK proof on-chain, on, chain, on uh, Ethereum, which means that from that on uh, from that period onwards, um, if you have, let's say, transactions on scroll and you have funds on scroll and you want to bridge them back to Ethereum, you can because that's the validity proof. Now, from a developer uh, experience point of view, like it says here, it's just change your RPC or what does that mean? Well, we built, scroll is built to be close to the developer experience of Ethereum. Now, you might have heard of the type one, two, three, four. I won't dive into that. Simply put, scroll is EVM compatible. And especially with our upgrade that we just did on Sepolia, and we will soon do it on mainnet, it means that SHA-256, blobs, pre-compiles, all the opcodes, they're supported. So you can just use Foundry, Hardhead, Aveworks, Solidity, View, Viper, whatever you want. Any ZK tool where the most ZK compatible rollup, you can use it on scroll. And, and that's what we aim to do because we believe in Ethereum. So we believe that Ethereum has proven, uh, uh, has proven product market fit. Uh, and we believe in the ethos uh, and, the, and, the, and the values. And so from a technical point of view, we chose to stick very close to Ethereum, i.e. bring the benefits of cheaper gas fees, bring the benefits of higher throughput, and bring the benefits of the same dev experience. You already learned Foundry, don't learn something else. It's awesome. Bring it to scroll. So 
The scope of the learning session today is applied ZK for builders. So everything I said, why does that matter? At the end, you as a developer, what matters is lower gas fees, higher throughput, same dev experience, meaning you don't learn something new. The same goes for ZK tools or DSL, so domain-specific language. These are languages built to you know, generate ZK proofs, write circuits. Now, they're all built with Ethereum in mind, usually. So you want your rollup to function as close as Ethereum as it, as it can. So I'm going to tell you a story first. Ahmed will laugh. You might recognize this. Once upon a time, me and Ahmed, we were in Barcelona. <clears throat> and, you know, I thought, let's build a ZK voting app. Cool. We started. We, we spoke about the flow. You know, user logs in. We generate a proof. You know, then we verify the proof. Easy peasy, right? Ahmed, uh, not really. And that's where my meltdown started. Uh, and if you've ever participated in a hackathon, you know this period very well. It's usually when you thought you spec everything out and worked, but it doesn't work. Uh, the moral of the story is, is that when you start with ZK today, there's a lot that comes at you, you know. And in, in, in this has nothing to do with you being a bad developer or an experience. It's just that it's a new paradigm. These are new concepts that are being introduced to you. And and something I always say as an example is, is that, um, you know, when you talk about the data that's passed to the circuit, People talk about a witness. And I remember at the start, I was like, what is a witness, man? Why everyone's talking about this witness? Who's the witness? What is a witness? So it's something that you'll have to get used to. But I really like Noir.js because it's a beginner friendly uh, or relatively beginner friendly way for you to get started. And Ahmed is going to show the magic. So real quick, how is ZK used? Now, I showed how ZK is used in terms of scaling. So what we're doing is we're proving that transactions are correct and generating a, proof, a ZK proof that, so a mathematical computation. So how is ZK used? Simply put, you have two buckets. You have privacy. I want to prove I'm Raza, but I don't want to show you my ID. So you can use a zero much proof for that. Now, how that exactly is constructed, I can come again and do a separate session on that. Uh, would love to come back. But so there's privacy, and then there's off-chain computation. What that means is I want to prove one plus one is two, but I don't want to do the computation on chain. So you have a separate circuit on the server running that checks one plus one is two, and then only the proof is generated. So what happens on chain? Well, simply put this, you have a circuit, and, and Ahmed will show you in a bit how that looks like. You have a circuit that's on a server, but what happens on chain is a verified contract. So on chain, there's a smart contract that can take the proof as an input. And so your application, talks to this contract, you know, just like how you're used that, you know, your DAP has an ABI connected with a smart contract, and there's a function, there's an input. You can input the proof there, and then your DAP talks to this contract and says, hey, is this proof correct or not? And then it shows in the, in the, in the, in the front end, yes, the proof is correct, or the proof is not correct. So that's the simple put how you can visualize when you talk about zero knowledge, applied ZK, building with ZK, you have the circuit, and you, and you have the verification contract that's the on-chain part. Now, you as a builder, you need to, now this is important for you as a builder, not all rollups are created equal. So today, if you go to the Noir docs, you will show that uh, we're the only ZK rollup that Noir works on. And that's because, remember what I said, we're EVM compatible, which means we made sure that scroll works functions just like Ethereum. So one of the pre-compiles that you need for Noir is EC pairing. And we support that. Uh, and again, on on uh, Sepolia, scroll Sepolia right now, we're fully AVM compatible. We support SHA-256 and blo uh, blobs. Um, but so this, from a chain point of view, as a developer, you need to check whether the DSLs, the ZK tools work on that chain or not. And so compatibility is, in, uh, is something you need to evaluate. So the dependencies, does, the pre does your chain have all the pre-compile support, hashing support, curves? And you also need to consider performance as a developer. So what is the verification time? Can I do client-side proving? Uh, and, and, and is it suitable for mobile development? Now, these two, by the way, are not chain dependent, but this is something that you need to consider as a developer. So real quick, what is a circuit? I think I, sp I spoke about circuits before, and Ahmed will talk about this a little bit as well. Simply put, circuit is just like a program that has a function. It takes certain inputs, let's say my age, and then in the, in the circuit, what it does is, it checks whether, let's say, I'm older than 18, and if so, it generates a proof. If not, you'll get an error usually that says,
this constraints of Ahmed. So these are usually the first, by the way, this is all credit to Ahmed. You know, you guys are in for a treat. Ahmed is the legend. These, these slides are from Ahmed. So usually these are the first steps on ZK. Uh, I think this is where I stop. Yeah, this is where I stop. So these are usually the first steps on ZK. You have to circuit, you have to verify a contract, uh, and then you have the nullifiers. I won't touch upon nullifiers in a bit, uh, right now. I think Ahmed will in a bit. Um, I'm going to stop sharing here in uh, for a second and see if there are any questions um, uh, in the chat. Um, if not, um, uh, Ahmed, I'm going to ask you to take over here. Um, sure. Let me share my screen. Can you guys see my screen now? Yes. Nice. OK, yeah, I think it was a really good intro um, from Raza. And yeah, also fun times at it Barcelona, <laughs> learning a lot about CK. And yeah, happy to be here, um, Yeah, just giving this intro to CK. So if you are a Solidity developer or a front-end developer, you have like more than half of the work or more like most of the knowledge that you already need to build on CK. And if you want to like build privacy apps and you want to deploy them on chain and you, you want to give like this new use case for users and also solve all these problems that um, having like, uh, like Ethereum like as a chain without privacy by default, if you want to work in all of that, what you need to learn now it's a code in a it's, 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 it's like a coding a circuit. So that's what we're going to do now. And we're going to just do an, an, an application that it's like uh, the half like that will get you to understand the architecture of a DAP, of a CNN Lodge DAP, a DAP with privacy that you can deploy in chain, that you can deploy on scroll. And also, uh, this has like the minimum amount of code that you need so you can get started. And then the idea is that after this, uh, you can like start to think about use cases, about ideas, and yeah, just to, to build on top of this. So yeah, this, this is the minimum uh, code required to, to get started. So I'm going to, to explain this, this repo. So, um, this is an, an application that lets you prove something very, very, very simple. You have two numbers and you may be familiar with this. This is just a test. You can erase this and you may, may, may see this and think, okay, this is, looks like exactly like, like a, um, a program that we as developers are used to write and you may be correct, but there is a bit uh, of a difference just like Rasa explained. What we do usually uh, when, when we code uh, in zero knowledge, we just like the, the, the graphic that Rasa shows that you have some inputs, you have some process, and you have some outputs. But in zero knowledge, it's different. You have some inputs, you have some assertions or validation. That's where the word validity proofs come from. You have some assertions or validations, and then the output is a proof. So here is a very, very simple circuit. This is the circuit. This is a circuit uh, written in Noir. Then I'm going to share with you guys uh, where you can learn more about this. But this is a very simple circuit. This circuit it has two inputs, and it checks if the two inputs are different. So you will only be able to, to check, to pass this verification, to pass this assertion, to generate a proof. You will only be able to generate the proof only if the X and Y are different. And if you are familiarized with Rust, so Noir is from, is, is inspired Rust, so that that that's where the syntax may come from. So you may feel more comfortable. But anyways, I think it's very very easy to get started if you are a developer already. The important part of the circuit is here pop that. There are two inputs, X and Y, but Y is the only public input. And X is, uh, it means that X is private. So everything is private by default, unless you marked a, a parameter as public. So the so we can like, uh, like in summary, this is a circuit 
that receives two inputs, one public and one private, and it will generate the proof only if the um, the 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 two numbers are different. So once you have already an app, so I have already this app running here. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to generate a proof inside the, the browser. And we are going to uh, just, oops, we are going to, uh, to uh, store it on chain, like to, to, to send a transaction and send the, the, the proof on chain and check it on chain on scroll. So let's first try it out and then check out the code. So for example, uh, if I put four and four here, it, will, it won't be able to generate a proof because the two numbers are equal. But if I put four and five here, and this is going to generate a proof, it's generating it now. And then it's going to just print it here on my console and it's going to uh, pop up MetaMask. So here, there are a few things happening here. So first is that uh, it generated this proof, which is this very long proof. And then uh, MetaMask popped up and I'm going to send a transaction on chain. So this may be a little bit new if you're, if you're not familiar with CK, we're going to explain it like in a bit. So I'm going to confirm these transactions. So I send a transaction on chain. So now let's wait for it to, to, to get approved. And um, as you remember, we have X, which is four, and Y, which is five. And oh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't change the 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 the, the bottom uh, name here. But yeah, when we click the bottom, we send a transaction on chain. And as you remember, five is public and four is private because that's how we created the circuit. So this is the public variable, and this is the the um, private variable. So now that the transaction was sent for the smart contract, there is a smart contract on the background, which is going to store the public input, which, which can read the public input. And uh, now the transaction is confirmed, I'm going to store it on chain just to show that I can, that I can, uh, that I can read it. So as you can see now on chain, I have like, I was able to read the public input and, and I want you to think about it it's like in terms of, okay, if now uh, me as a Solita developer, I have the ability to read public and private inputs, what is going to be public and what is going to be private. So for example, if you're doing DeFi applications, so you can send a transaction to another user. So you can send tokens, ERC20 tokens or whatever. So if you're able to do that, maybe the amount of tokens can be public. And as for it to be a private transaction, the, the, the sender or the receiver is going to be private. So that way, you know how much money there is on chain, but you, know, you don't know who has it or an NFT transaction or whatever you want. If you're doing like a voting app, like uh, the, the, the app we were, we were doing with Rasa, I want you to think about, okay, what is going to be public? What is going to be private? What is going to be the X in here? What is going to be the Y? So uh, maybe you're, you, you, the, thing, the, the, the fact that you voted is going to be public. And the vote, which is, was like maybe a presidential candidate or just like for or against or whatever, is going to be private or the other way around. Um, like the result is going to be public, the vote is going to be public, but the voter is going to be private. So you can play around with different mechanics. You can do it in DeFi, like in governance, as well as in social media, or yeah, a lot of use cases, because this is something very, very new. And it has a lot of room for us to be creative as developers, as founders, and think about different uh, projects uh, that you may... And, and I think that now on the hackathon is the perfect place to 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 learn about it okay so usually what do you need to 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 create an application that it has a ck enabled so as we mentioned before you will need a circuit and for the circuit you can do a couple of things so 
Here I have a, a directory that has the circuit and I have the Nargo command. And it has like just, it's, it's, it's a very similar to a compiler. Just think it about, uh, as it, as a, think it, think it about it as a compiler, but usually your compiler builds into bytecode, but uh, Nargo or a circuit or, or DSL enabled CK framework like Nargo is from Noir, uh, it's going to have like, instead of compiling to bytecode, it's going to compile to um, these assertions and this is going to compile these circuits. So you can, but it's very similar. So for example, you can say Nargo build and it's going to build your circuits and check for errors. And the most important thing is going to be this code gen verifier. So this is very, very interesting for me because what it builds is it creates this file. And as, I can see, as you can see, it's a solidity file. So let's check it out. So it's going to create this file, which is very big. And you may get familiarized with this. You may, may, may know what this is about. And as you can see, this is a solidity file. So this is automatically generated. So this solidity file, which has a lot of numbers, a lot of math stuff that we don't really have to understand, it basically what it is able to do is to verify a proof. So you have a verify function that receives two parameters. One is the proof, as you remember, the big numbers that we saw on the console that I was printing. And two is the public inputs. So you remember you have X and Y. So here is he's going to receive only Y. And it's going to return true if the if the um, if, if 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 it was correct. So what you need to do the first step uh, after you build your circuit, or if if you're building, for example, a, a if you're building a I don't know a social media application that you can only post if you have an NFT, for example, and after you coded the circuit and you built it, the next step for you is going to deploy a contract like this. You're going to generate this contract and you're going to deploy it. So that's what I did in my, here in the readme, you can see the, the, the verifier contract here. So you're going to deploy it, for example, on scroll scan. And this is the, the important part about deploying on scroll at this moment, that scroll is the only CK EVM that allows you to, uh, to deploy verifier contracts from the main DSLs. So you have Noir, which is the one that we're using. We also have Circum, you may have heard about it you also have um, Socrates. So scroll supports all the, the most important um, opcodes if we want to get more more technical, the most important, um, no, not the opcodes, but the um, pre-compiles that are needed to support, uh, to support this, to support all the, the verifier, because as you can see, they're, they're using like very, um, very, a lot of different stuff from the EVM and scroll supports them all. So it's everything tested. So, so yeah, I think right now, because the CK EVM has the, 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 the fastest final finality time more than the optimistic rollups as Rasa mentioned. And also because scroll is the only CK EVM that supports uh, all the major DSLs like Noir and Nargo. So yeah, the, 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 the best place to build CK apps right now in a technical level is scroll. So yeah, so, and, and also the, the community uh, part and the research that, and the contributions that scroll is doing to to the CK ecosystem. I think it's, yeah, I think it's, 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 uh, it's a good place for, if you want to think about what type of application you want to build on scroll, I will definitely recommend uh, thinking about a zero knowledge application at this point. Okay, so as you can see, I deploy here uh, my verifier contract. And uh, next, there's going to be something that you will need to build, uh, which, is, which is what I like to call a custom logic smart contract. This, this is where you can put whatever logic you, you want. So here, I, um, uh, I created this smart contract and also submitted to scroll. 
Uh, and here is where you will need your already have, if you already have existing uh, knowledge on Solidity, you can use it in this part. So in this part, you can have like all the on-chain logic, all the part, uh, all the parts that you need that you're going to be storing in in Ethereum. Because as Rasa mentioned, you have this off-chain off computation that you can run in your browser, that you can run in a server, you can run on a mobile device. All this off-chain computation needs to be verified on on-chain, and that's where you're going to need your your solid skills to write some custom logic that helps like uh, making everything secure by Ethereum or by scroll or any EVM chain. So here, what you will need to do is to, uh, once you are already deployed your verifier contract, you will need to um, use it to check your, um, your proofs on chain on a different contract, because here is where all the logic is going to be um, stored. For example, if you have voting application, this is, this is where the tally is going to be counted. Uh, if you have a DeFi application, this is where all the balances are going to be updated, etc. whatever you want to do. And in, in this case, is this is very simple. Remember, we have the X and Y program where only Y is public. And first, the, the, the two things that you, you will need to do, everything to send a proof uh, to the smart contract first is just to check if the proof is correct and you will use the other smart contract that we already deployed. And secondly, you will need to add your custom logic, which in this part is in this in this contract is just um, having a public input, but you can do uh, whatever logic you want. And after that, the, the other part that you will need to do once your contracts are deployed, you will need to um, you will need to uh, like find a way of generating these proofs and the I think that the way the best way to generate the proof is on the browser or in your mobile device something in in a device that you have complete control because if you send a transactions to a server you will lose some anonymity but it will depend on each use case it's perfectly fine depending on the on the on the on the use case that you that you're using so in this case, we're building a proof on the browser and we are using the Noir.js library. So no matter what DSL that you use, Circom, Socrates, Noir, um, there is going to be usually a JavaScript library that allows you to generate the proof. And yes, in this case, uh, Noir.js, I think it's very good to get started. As you can see, there is not a lot of code. and you will usually have a function that is able to generate a proof. So you pass the inputs, you pass X and Y that you can grab from the browser. By the way, uh, by recommendation of Rasa, we're using Next.js here, and uh, but you can use whatever uh, JavaScript library you want. And also the main, the official documentation is for Vita.js. And yeah, so you're seeing something here new. We're seeing here uh, the, the, the next year. So if you like React, if you like, um, if you like um, next year, yes, you can grab this as a, as a demo. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty, pretty cool. So uh, yeah, from JavaScript to generate the proof, usually from the browser, but also uh, you can use stuff like, for example, Sintry which, by the way, is a, a, a is also part of the hackathon. You can also learn about Sindri and hack on Sindri uh, that allows you to generate proofs in in a in a in a server, like in a third party server. So remember that there may be some CK applications that um, you don't need to um, uh, to 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 have full privacy. For example, if you want to aggregate transactions, make proof of proof. I don't know. There, there are many, many applications where you can use that. But here in this case, we are doing it in the browser. And then uh, we are sending it using Ethers.js to a smart contract. So this, as you can see, if you already know Ethers.js, if you already know Solidity, um, you're set to now get started learning Noir or any DSL. And yeah, just start making applications that that allows you to 
to um, yeah g give users privacy. And if you want to get, uh, if you want to learn more about this, uh, you can. My recommendation is first understand the basics. First under understand uh, how the circuit and your smart contracts and a front end UI is are the three connected, and then uh, think about use cases and learn techniques and how to, to make that happen. For example, my next recommendation is for you to study uh, how to prove Merkle Tree's memberships. This can serve you for DeFi application. This can serve you for voting application, uh, social media. Yeah, this, this is like a super core um, use case that, that you can do with CK. Basically prove, prove that you're part of a Merkle Tree without, without revealing which leaf you are. So this is a next a next step, and also while you're learning learning about Merkle trees, you can learn about nullification, which is also super important. Which means that um, if you, for example, um, the Merkle tree represents uh, money that you have stored, and then you use that money, how to uh, remove you from the the tree so you can just do the transaction again and again. Basically, how you can't double spend or how you can't double vote or how you can't double post if you are making a social media app. And yeah, basically you can learn about all of these techniques, Merkle trees, nullification, also a little bit of infrastructure if you're using a relayer. Uh, you can learn more about this, but the, the basic and fundamentals that I will uh, recommend you to, to start with is just the circuits and just understanding what you can do with public and private uh, inputs. So yeah, that's my demo for today. I also am going to share this, the link to the repo if you want to to, uh, to try it out. And I don't know if you have any, any questions so far. My face on the screen. Hmm. All right. If there are no further questions, I will say that um, I hope this is going to be one of many. You know, I'm addressing Koha and, and Idris here and, and the whole Web3 Africa community. Uh, you know, I got jealous when my boy Rahad was here. I was like, yo, when, I'm, when, when am I getting the invite? So um, I'm happy I'm here. I'm happy we are here. Um, we've questions. also got the level up. Sorry, go ahead. There's a question. Someone wants to ask a question. Oh, uh, uh yeah, go ahead, man. Yeah, I'll meet your mic and just throw the question out there. All right. Oh, um, it's, hello, it's, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's up? Yeah, I just want to ask a question regards the application. Um, for anyone who's going to come in and build using the Solana. Um, on Solana network, is it compulsory to be able to use the next JS as well, or you could have a partner who is working on that end while you are focusing on the back end using uh, building on the back end? Yeah, so you, you mean about the hackathon? Yes. Yeah, so you can have team, co yeah, you can have teams. So if you have a team like, you know, you're busy with front end and someone else does the circuit side of things or the block and that type of thing, that's fine. All right, all right. Yeah, I think that what we'll do is um, there's a bunch of workshops lined up, by the way. On the Monday, the 22nd, we'll have our partner workshops. Uh, I'm looking, uh, I have actually spoken with Ahmed about this, but 24th, 23rd, we have we have a slot. So we might do uh, a couple of ground up, uh, you know, ZK workshops. What we'll do is, so actually, Ahmed has built this out with the Next.js uh, because I said Next.js, uh, but... He has one with Vite as well. Uh, so we will, we will be able to do a, a bunch of things where we showed up from the ground up. Um, so I, I'm still configuring that, but no. I mean, your team compilation can be whatever. And then, you know, you, also you don't have to use ZK. You just got to build something awesome. You know, come and build. It's kind of like the premises. We just wanted to show, I know there are a, a lot of great devs there that it's like, hey, how do I get started with ZK? Uh, so that's why what we discussed today, but... Um, yeah, something else, 
you guys should check out um, uh, is uh, um, Level Up. Uh, it's it's almost done, <laughs> but we'll have challenges here, and so we'll have a lot of challenges here for partners, but also beginner ZK challenges, beginner Solidity challenges. Uh, so w let's say once you've checked out one of Ahmed's workshops, he also has cool articles and tutorials. Um, and uh, you want to actually start building, you know, the number one advice is always like start building, but you don't know what, right? I, this, I'm, I was like that. So we'll have guided exercises so you can get skills there. All right. But make uh, sure to... Okay. No, I was just going to make a joke, so make sure to sign up. <laughs> also, by the way, the the um, challenges and the... Oh, sorry. Uh, the, the, the bounties from the partners are live, so I'm going to share them here. This is what's just published, so you want to... If you, if you, if you want to get inspired about other stuff... Uh, also, about CK, we have Aztec, um, which, is, which you can use Noir. Uh, just like we showed now, and also Sintry. And just like uh, I mentioned, you can use like proving on a server. But yeah, just like Rasa mentioned, there is a lot of other stuff and not only CK. So yeah, make sure to to to, to check the bounties also from, from the partner, which, because I think there are some, some pretty good ones and also very good uh, projects. Yeah, part of, uh, part of the hackathon. All right. Uh, as you mentioned, that Ahmed has like a blog, or something that he has articles. Uh, could that be also sent to the chat? So it was. Yeah, can you repeat the? So yeah. Yeah, you mentioned uh, articles and on um, that. Ahmed oh yeah. Anything, so, I was like, can that be sent? Oh well, yeah. Yeah. Ahmed will drop it in the chat. Yeah, I'm going to yeah oh, drop a couple yeah. of videos and yeah. stuff. Yeah. His article on Noir on Scroll is still something I refer to when I do workshops. The step-by-step the, the -step installation is perfect. So it's uh, it's definitely something you should check out. All right. I'll, I'll go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for the workshop. I really believe that this has been very insightful. I myself have gotten very good value. Please, I have a question. All right. Please, go ahead. All right, thank you so much. So my question is that um, a NOR smart contract can be deployed on support on scroll. Yes. So with NOR, when you do NOR, uh, code gen verifier, it, it creates a smart contract for you. And all yeah. you have to do is deploy it on scroll Sapolia, and then you can interact with it. All right. Any more questions? The floor is open, please. Uh, I think questions are coming up now, so let's just give it a bit. If you have questions, please just ask or mute your mic and ask or just pop it in the chat. We are in the final moments of the workshop, so this is the right time to do that. And as well, is there a community that people can join to ask like support during the workshop, build like Akathorn support channel or something like that? Yes, there's a TG group. Uh, let me... Uh... Share the link. Uh, invite links, call the link. So there are two groups. There's one for level up, uh, but I'll, I'll share the TG group here for the hackathon that you can join. But we also have a level up group that's for the challenges. So we've got one group for the hackathon. Any questions? We've got one group for the challenges, but I shared the one for the hackathon um, that you can join. All right, guys, I unfortunately have to jump. Um, but, uh, you know, again, Goha, Web3 Africa, Idris, you guys are legends. Uh, I hope to, I hope we can come back. We've got a bunch of cool stuff coming up, like with challenges and small mini courses. You know, when you want to get started with cryptography, when with ZK or with Solidity or Viper. Uh, so I hope you know we, we can co keep coming back, giving you guys alpha and 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 uh, and, and do these workshops. Again, a call to action: please sign up. Uh, would love to see you guys in the hackathon. Drop by in the TG. If you have any questions, tag us. Um, 
yeah so raza codes for me and let me just grab uh, uh Ahmed, can you drop your philosopher codica I, I always forget how to spell it <laughs> there you go okay uh he's philosopher and someone who codes so that's that's the, the to your handle um all right homies uh i will catch you guys soon again appreciate for hosting us uh and hope to see you guys in vortex hackathon take care bye bye thank you see you all right thank you so much thank you. okay uh thank you guys this work is recorded so i'll be talking on our youtube channel cool yeah yeah send it our way thanks for having us bye